Turn on notification bell. Don't miss update. The price graph of Bitcoin, sometimes I worry, is the sole reason why so many millions of people are getting interested in Bitcoin. What are the other reasons? Well, you should be interested in the philosophy of Bitcoin, the entire paradigm about, you know, it gives money, the power of money back to the people who own the money or have earned it, etc. But I do agree that in the absence of robust price growth, we would probably have negligible interest in Bitcoin. In light of that, to know how high or low it can go, I think is a good question. Let's begin with the easier one. How low can it go? It can go to zero. Right? What is the probability that it goes to zero? Well, there are several factors that could stir that. Extreme regulatory action could be one. Uh, evolution of technology in a way, crypto cryptographic uh, technology in a way that was not envisaged could be another, etc. So yes, there is a huge downside risk. So if price is what your fundamental concern is when it comes to Bitcoin, I would strongly recommend that you only put in as much money into Bitcoin as you're ready to lose. This is extremely important. Be reasonable and responsible. Now on the upside, this is where it gets a little difficult. I'll explain to you three different ways of looking at how far the Bitcoin price could go and then you make up your own mind. So if Bitcoin becomes money, when I say Bitcoin becomes money, I'm not saying that, you know, the dollars and the euros and the pounds and the rupees will cease to exist. But I am saying that Bitcoin also starts getting used as money. Then the number of the total value of Bitcoin in the system of money, the monetary system, the international monetary system is going to be substantially more than it is today. So for instance, just to get you to perform some arithmetic, look at the total value of all the US dollars that are in the world. Or of course, US dollar is a very big currency. You could take a smaller uh, currency such as Singapore dollars. Look at the total value of all Singapore dollars in the world and then look at the total value of all the Bitcoin in the world. Bitcoin continues to be a fairly small currency in terms of its market capitalization, which is a term we use to signify all the value of all the Bitcoins in the world at a given point of time. If Bitcoin becomes more and more like a currency, its total market capitalization, that is total value, is going to be much more than it is today. So you estimate what that number is going to be, divide that by the total number of Bitcoin, which if you want an easy calculation, you could just call 20 million regardless of which year you are performing this computation in and that could be the price of each Bitcoin. So this is one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is say, you know what, the price of Bitcoin has to be based on some underlying value. Just like when we evaluate the price of a certain stock, we want to see what is the earning of that stock. Well, then you could see the number and the amount of Bitcoin that is being transacted when you are mining Bitcoin, right? And you could say that it is reasonable to expect that the price of Bitcoin will be such and such multiple of the number of Bitcoin that has been transacted and the price that it took, the cost that it took to mine those Bitcoin. This could be a technical way, a formulaic way to approach this. And third, finally, say you say, you know what, all things apart, common sense dictates that it's only demand and supply, right? Because all other factors are underlying factors. The real thing is I am willing to sell Bitcoin to you for X. If you're willing to buy for X, that becomes the market price. Correct. So that is where you assess are more people getting interested in Bitcoin? Are they going to hold it for a long time? Since the number of Bitcoin that has to be created now is a very small number. In such a situation, what does microeconomics say about, you know, the demand and supply curve? Well, that is something that you will have to find out. It'd be very irresponsible of me to try to make a prediction. And frankly, nobody. I'm going to have to say that with great emphasis again, absolutely nobody can make predictions like in three months this will be the price and in three years this will be the price. It makes for great media. You know, I see people on TV come and make predictions, but it's very irresponsible. You have to take your own risk and when you make the prediction, you may still be gravely wrong. So like I said in the beginning of this video, invest or purchase only as much as you are ready to lose. Keep watching. This is getting very interesting. I want to talk to you about more things.